Now we need to tell the network manager that we want to spawn the enemies. So click on the network manager and just like we added the firebolt and the firebolt blue for the register spawnable prefabs, click on plus and here where it says empty, we're going to select the, um, the uh, Spider-Man prefab, right? So click on Spider-Man and select the Spider-Man prefab, right? So make sure you have the three of them here and we're good to go. Also, make sure you go to the spawn point prefab and you add the network identity because our spawn enemy script depends on it because it has a network behavior. Without a network identity, there is no behavior. Now I added it myself, click on add component network identity. All right. Now let's go ahead and work on the script that spawns the enemy. If you look inside of the my scripts folder, you will see a spawn enemy script. So just double click on it to open it in MonoDevelop. And now let's do some modifications here. First of all, you notice something is that we have the Iron Man behavior script. So this basically is already attached to um, a script here. And uh, that script is attached to the player. But as you can see, it's looking for the player, but we don't have that player anymore. The reason why we don't have just one pl that player is because we have multiple players. So we cannot just find one player. We need to, f to find multiple of them. And we don't want to do that when it's the start. We want to do this when the server starts. So we're going to have to remove that. All right, so we don't need this anymore. I'm going to remove that. We still need the timer to, to know when the, uh, the, um, th the enemies are going to spawn. All right, so that's good. Now we can keep the object to spawn. We might need it in the near future. All right, so as you can see now, this goes, this goes in red. So we can just remove that, all right. And now, okay, let me just remove the text here. Now I'm going to work on the logic. So I want to turn this script into a networking script so that I can know when the server has started. And in order to do that, I need to be using the Unity engine dot networking and turn this into a network behavior. All right. Now, next thing I want to do is create the um, method that will spawn the enemy. Now, the, the enemy will spawn on the server, just like we did for the, for the firebolts. Why on the server? Because the server will then um, ripple it through all the different clients. So right here, I'm going to create it. Command, we, we make some room, all right. That's going to be a command. And the name of the command, so void cmd, remember commands needs to start with cmd, and spawn enemy. All right. Now, to spawn the enemy, what do we need to do? We need to, um, to instantiate the object, and we already have it here. So I'm just going to remove that. I'm going to copy this, so Command X. I'm going to just cut and paste it here. But here, I need to call the, the command instead. So Command Spawn Enemy. All right. By the way, you can leave timer zero. That's good, because that resets it. But we need to also get the uh, local server, but we're going to, uh, to get the start server very soon. All right. Then once we have that, we need to get all the players from the game. So in order to get all the players that are in the game, I need to store them somewhere. So I'm going to create an array of game objects. Game object and an, ar an array with an open and close curly brackets and then players. All right. So I need to set them. I'm going to, I'm going to send, set them here by doing players is equal to game object dot find game objects with an S with tag. As you can see, there's two of them. We need the object because there's multiples of them. And the tag is the player tag. Now, how do I know it's the player tag? Well, because I made that game, but you can, you know, you can check it yourself by going to Unity and then select the Iron Man character, the prefab here. And as you can see, it has a tag that says player. You guys see it? All right, so that's how I know. Only the only the, the element prefab has that tag. Perfect. All right, going back to the script. Now, what I want to do is that I have all the players. So I need to get only one player, you know, because I'm going to spawn an enemy and, and tell this enemy to attack that specific player. And in order to do that, I need to pick a character, but I want to pick it at random. I don't want to pick always the same character. So I'm going to create some randomness here. So int index is equal to random dot range and now i'm going to create a range from let's say 0 to 1000 so that's going to give me a random number between 0 and 1000 and then i'm going to pick between the length of the number of players so yeah i'm going to use the modulus 
players dot length. Now that's how I like to create randomness. You don't have to do that. You could have done just a random from here to player length here again. So you could have done that instead. Let me let me show you command X. You could have done this instead. All right, and that will have worked as well. But um, but the reason why I'm doing this is that it's a lot more um, a lot more random, and that's exactly what we want more randomness, so that it's a, it's more it's it's more fair for the players. All right. So now I do have the index. I'm going to use it. I'm going to say game object, and I'm going to call this one player to spawn. So that will be the player that I want to spawn is equal to that would be the players and the object at the index. So the players at index. Okay. And then now what I want to do is um, tell the other scripts that this is the player to attack. So for the, the enemy, I need to tell that this is the player to attack. And uh, right now I have the instantiate, but I'm going to say that this is the enemy that will instantiate. So game object enemy, I need a reference to the enemy. So now I have a reference of it. All right. And now right here, I'm going to say enemy and then dot get component. And the component is going to be the player health. And I want to tell the player health that um, actually, what, what I'm sorry, not player health, because this is the enemy now, I'm sorry. So that would be the, uh, the enemy movement. I want to tell the enemy movement that this enemy is moving towards this player to attack. So I'm going to say dot player is equal to player to attack. A player to spawn. I'm sorry. There you go. Player to spawn. There we go. Now, as you can see, the player is red because the um, the player is not accessible. It's private. So I'm going to go in the enemy movement and make this public. So going back to Unity, I'm going to select the enemy um, movement script, which would be inside of the mini Spider-Man. No, not sure. So just you know, just look, look for it here. Enemy movement. There it is. It's inside of the uh, mini Spider-Man. Yes, I was right actually. I'm going to double click to open it and I need to make the player public. Just add public in front of this. All right, that's it. So now the player is public and I'm going to do the same for the next script. But before I do so, I'm going back to the spawn enemy script. And as you can see now, the player works. Now the next um, script that I want to say is the player, the enemy attack. I want to tell the uh, enemy which enemy to attack, which would be the player, right? Enemy dot get component enemy attack and then dot player but as you can see it's probably going to complain that I do not have the player and that's okay we can just fix it right now going back to the enemy attack again inside of unity I'm going to look for the enemy attack there it is double click on it to open it and now I'm looking for the player. There it is. Game object player. I'm going to put public in front of this. Public. All right. Now it's accessible on the other scripts. Going back to the spawn enemy script. Now it's all good. It's right there. Okay. So next thing we want to do is tell the server to spawn this object. How do we tell the server? Well, network server dot spawn. And we're going to spawn the enemy. All right. Okay, so at, at, at this point, we go, by the way, I put player to spawn. I don't like this. That's not the player to spawn. That's the player to attack. So I did make, make a mistake in, in the, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the syntax, but that's okay. We can easily uh, rename that in no time. There we go. So that's the player to attack. So this is the enemy to spawn, and this is the player that will be attacked by the enemy. All right. Now, I want to double check that, um, that we put the timer to zero when we have the, uh, the the server that starts. So I need to have some kind of a way to say that hey, the player has the the, the server has started. It's time to to to, to uh, reset the timer. So here I'm going to do a new method public override void, and that will be on start server. So what do we do once the server starts? we're going to um, to put timer is equal to zero. So we actually don't need the timer in the start here. That's okay if we have it, but we actually don't need it. I'm just going to remove that. All right. And what I want to do also is that um, 
at this point, I want to add maybe if the game has started or not, um, you know, just to make sure that um, actually I'm not going to need it for now, but later on, maybe I want to add something to say that if the game has started or not, so that we, we only start spawning if the game has started. Actually, that's a very good idea. So I'm going to do it right now. Bull. Um, and here I'm going to call it game started. And at the beginning, the game started is false. But when when the on start server is there, then we can say that the game started is true because the game just started at this point is equal to true. And now in the update, I don't want to run that unless the game has started. So if the game has not started, so if game has not started, then return. So this will only run if the game has started. All right. I have two games here. One is the server on the left and the client on the right. And now it's just a matter of time till we have some players that will spawn. Here we go. We have the enemies spawning. So one is following, as you can see, one is following the white character on the left. And then one is following the yellow character as well. So our job is done at this point. They both are getting followed. All right, that's perfect. And as you can see, they will kill the characters. There we go. The one on the left died. Now the camera is not centered, but that's not a problem. We can definitely center the camera later. But as you can see, they die and they will respawn. So that's exactly what we want. Now, as you can see, this one also stops. So we're going to have to fix this as well. No problem. But we can also add more prefab objects. So we need to destroy the object here. 